Yeehaw, I got snake eyes. <laughs> I don't think so. Mind crush! Well that's scary. Today we're building Eleven from Stranger Things, a truly unique girl with powers of telekinesis and a love for egos. First appearing on Netflix in 2016, she's part of the most recent jumpstart in love for the 80s as well as a new love and respect for Dungeons and Dragons. So our goals for this build are pretty simple. We need telekinesis, we have the ability to peek on people's lives and hear them, we need to be able to melt people's brains with our mind. And we also need to have an understanding of the Veil of Shadows, which the show calls the Upside Down. Eleven's a human. Dare I say Eleven's unique skills make her skilled. 8 health, 25 base movement speed, 2 free boosts, plus get constitution and charisma, and take voluntary flaws and strength and dexterity, and put the third boost in intelligence. We don't need to wield great axes of any kind, and we tend to use mental shields instead of actually trying to dodge attacks. For answers to repeat, pick arcane tattoos for the shield spell. For heritage, pick skill to increase our deception skill to expert level 5. Friends don't lie. You need to make sure you know friends don't lie. As an experiment, I think Mystic works very well for her background as she's dabbled in magic or science as the show calls it. You get two boosts, put them into wisdom and charisma. You get the arcane skill and you also get a planes lore skill. Personally, I'll go with shadow planes. That's the most appropriate, I think, for the upside down. And for our skill feat, you get Arcane Sense. You can cast a first level detect magic at will as an innate arcane spell. If you're a master in Arcana, it's a third level. And if you're a legendary, it's heightened to fourth. As far as Eleven's abilities go, I noticed a few things while we watching this show again for this video. One, she has telekinesis or can move stuff with her mind. That's easy enough with some spells. Second, she can make people's brains melt. What does that look like in Pathfinder 2E? Is she cooking their brains? Is she boiling them alive? Is she mentally damaging them? Pfft, I don't know. She clearly scries on people through the television sets. From the show, when she goes into a tantrum or a rage, people just start to lose their balance, and their blood starts pouring out of their eyes. So I'm going to be liberal with her spells as I want to try to capture her spirit of what she's doing and how she's doing correctly. If it's an issue or you have a better alternative, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear back from you. So the class I'm going to pick for Eleven is she's going to be a sorceress. And for their bloodline, I'm going to go with the shadow bloodline. Because we need to have the occult spell list, and none of the other classes really fit Eleven. She's not carrying a book or is specifically taught any abilities, so she's not a wizard. She doesn't have a familiar or brew potions, so she's not a witch. I want her to be an oracle, but none of the mysteries really fit her character. In the show, she does get weaker as she exerts her power, but it's not like crippling or as devastating to the body as Oracle is. So, she's a sorceress, in my eyes. As a sorceress, you get a boost to your charisma, as well as 6 plus your constitution modifier. You're trained in perception, fortitude, and reflex saves, and your expert and will saves. You're trained in number of skills equal to 2 plus your intelligence modifier. Because of all our previous choices, we're already trained in occultism, stealth, arcana, shadow planes lore, and we have 4 skills to pick extra. I'd pick acrobatics, diplomacy, survival, and intimidation. She doesn't really lie, but she's good at detecting lies, but we're not using our muscles to lift things, so I think acrobatics would be a good for a better feat later on, diplomacy to make friends, survival to hunt squirrels, and intimidation to start, you know, scaring the bejesus out of people. You're trained in simple weapons and unarmed attacks, you're trained in the spell attack rolls and spell DCs of occult spells, you're untrained in all armor, and you're trained in unarmored defense because AD strip doesn't mean you can stop crossbow bolts. And for sorcerer spell casting, it means you don't need material components to cast your spell, which means you can just cast your spells without any issue. You also get cantrips on first level spells. I will get telekinetic projectiles or cantrip to propel an object weighing less than one bulk at an enemy for 1d6 with your charisma modifier. And magic missile at the first level to send out a dart of 1d4 plus one that automatically hits. As part of the shadow bloodline, you get a lot of different spells at different spell levels. So here's the list of them. Just know your important thing is that you use the spell list of the occult and you also get a bonus if you use blood magic. At this level you also get four ability boosts, put them into constitution, wisdom, intelligence, and charisma. We're not going to be focusing on strength and dexterity at all because you do not need them. For our second level sorcery feat, let's get a dangerous sorcery. When you cast a spell from your spell slots, if it deals damage and doesn't have a duration, you gain a bonus equal to your spell's level as damage. For our skill feat, let's get cat's fall. The treat falls if they are 10 feet shorter. Call it her using your telekinesis to steady her fall. At the third level, we get access to second level spells. I'll get Telekinetic Maneuver to trip, disarm, and shelf people with our mind powers. General Fields get Toughness to increase our health by our level. We also get Signature Spells, which is a spell that's automatically heightened every time we gain a spell level. I also just getting Magic Missiles for some automatic damage you don't have to roll for. For a skill increase, we get Acrobats up to Expert. At the fourth level, we get a Sorcerer Feat, get a Cult Evolution, become trained in one skill of your choice. I would pick Nature. 
why not? Once per day, you can spend a woman to choose a mental occult spell you don't know and add to your spell repertoire. You do lose this temporary spell the next time you make your daily preparations, but that's fine. It's a stepping stone to a better feat later on, and for our skill phase, get Intimidating Glare, because nothing beats that 11 death stare. At the 5th level, we get ability boosts to put on the Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, and we also get access to 3rd level spells. We get really liberal with 11 spell lists, and start focusing less on the actual spells and more trying to find the ones that fit 11's character. Be aware they're not going to be one for one accurate, but just capturing the spirit that 11 puts out. Agonizing Despair is a great spell for 46 mental damage with a will save. Most of these people are considered commoners she's killing, so 46 would be melting brains. Paralyze is great if you want to stop a single target. Answers your feet, get ornate tattoo to get mage armor. To gain a plus one item bonus to your AC when you use it. Magical fortitude, your proficiency rank and fortitude saves increase up to expert. For skill increase, let's increase shadow planes up to expert. 11 has the best idea of what the upside down is and what's going on there. You know, besides Will and Barb and Nancy and Hopper and Joyce. A lot of people have been to the upside down. Huh. At the 6th level, you get a Sorcerer Feet, get Advanced Bloodline, and increase the number of focus points in your focus pool by 1. And for a skill, you get Unmistakable Lore. When you use Recall Knowledge on any lore category you're trained in, if you roll a Critical Failure, you get a Failure instead. If 11 doesn't know, it's more than what other people know about the Upside Down. So, I call this even. At the 7th level, you get access to 4th level spells. Fly would be cool. If you want 11 to be able to fly around. She hasn't done that yet, but I'm sure she will. A Resilience Field is great for an Invisible Shield to protect you and your allies. Extra Spellcaster, your proficiency rank in your spell attack rolls and spell DCs for your bloodline increases up to Expert. General Feet, let's get Forager. Use Survival to subsist. If you roll anything worse than a success, you get success instead. Use this to mind spike squirrels into the ground for nourishment. For skill increases, get Acrobatics up to Master. At 8th level, you get Sorcerer Feet, get Steady Spellcasting. If a reaction would disrupt your spellcasting action, attempt a DC 15 flat check. If you succeed, your action isn't interrupted. This is great if you want to keep spells going if someone's trying to distract you, like Demodogs or Giant Evil Tentacles. For a skill feat, get lie to me. You can engage in someone in a conversation if it's trying to lie to you. You can use a deception DC if it's higher than your perception DC to see if they're lying. At the ninth level, get access to fifth level spells, and these are a lot of 11 staples, such as banishment to send demogorgons back to the upside down, telekinetic hall to move 80 bulk objects 20 feet up and around in an area, forceful hands to great for invisible shield for you task to protect you and your allies. Ancestry feat is an adapted cantrip from the first. For our answer feat, pick Adapted Cantrip from the first level. Pick a Cantrip from a different tradition, like Primal for Gale Blast which is really good for a force push. Lightning Reflexes increase your reflex saves up to Expert, and for a skill increase, get Intimidation up to Expert. At the 10th level, you get Ability Boost from the Constitution, Intelligence, Charisma, and Wisdom. For a Sorcerer feat, get Greater Bloodline to increase our focus points by 1. For a skill feat, get Group Impression to make an impression. You can use your Diplomacy DC to... Uh, you can use your Diplomacy against the Will DCs of two targets instead of just one. It's just two, but you only need to convince half the party, and one of them's in the Upside Down, so pick Mike and Dustin, you know, to impress. At our 11th level, we get access to 6th level spells, and Scrying is a solid pick, so you can find your mom, or some Soviet Russian, or a spy on your boyfriend, while a Force is great for an 11 Force field to protect the party. Alertness increases your perception up to Expert. General feels get breath controls. So you can hold your breath 25 times longer than usual without suffocating. You gain a plus one bonus against inhalants, like inhaled poisons. When you roll success on a saving throw involving poisons, you get a critical success instead. Nothing in character about this. This is just more padding out the character build. Plus, you can call the ability to get submerged under water and resist the general musky air of the upside down as part of this as well. You also get simple weapon expertise, but we don't need to worry about that because 11 doesn't use weapons. For skill increase, you get intimidation up to master. At the 12th level, get a sorcerer feat and you get greater spiritual evolution. To have our spells be effective with incorporeal creatures, spirits, and creatures on the ethereal plane. So now we're effective against mind flayers now. Skill feat, let's get battle cry. When you roll initiative, you can initiate a mighty battle cry and demoralize any observed foe as a free action. Start the bell with an 11 battle cry and hurl pencils at your enemies at high speeds. Like bullseye. At the 13th level, we get access to 7th level spells, and reverse gravity is really fun for a levitation trick to pull on enemies. For answer feet, get adaptive adept, pick a primal spell at the first level. We can't heighten it, but shock would be great for an area of effect that knocks people to the ground on a failed reflex save. For defensive rogues, we are proficiently ranking on our defense, increase up to expert. For our skill increases, we get shadow plane lore up to master, so now you'll know more than will about the upside down. Weapon specialization, deal 2 additional damage with weapons on our attacks in which you're expert in, which doesn't matter because 11 doesn't use any type of melee weapons. At the 14th level, you get a Sorcerer Feat, get Reflect Spell, to counter spell to counteract a spell that affects either single targets or an area. You can turn that spell back on its caster. 
Eleven doesn't really do any magic to magic fights, but I have a feeling this might happen in the next season. For a skill feat, let's get Terrified Retreat. When you critically succeed to demoralize action, if the target's level is lower than yours, the target flees for one round. People tend to run away when Eleven gets all Eleven-y. At our 15th level, we get access to 8th level spells, and I don't see anything here that really reflects the 11th character, so just upcast your previous levels. For ability boost, let's boost constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. For general feet, get fleet to increase our land speed to even 30 by a plus 5. It's not a lot, but it's good to have an extra space of movement. Master Soul Caster, reducing your rank in spell attack rolls and spell DCs. For our occult spell, increase up to master. And for our skill increase, it gets shadow plane lore up to legendary. No one's going to know more about the upside down more than 11. At the 16th level, we gain a Sorcerer Feet, get Effortless Concentration to immediately gain the effects of Sustain a Spell Action, allowing you to extend the duration of your active Sorcerer Spells. And for our skill feats, get Recognized Spells, you can attempt to identify spells that are being casted. I imagine more Eleven-like characters in the future, so it's a good idea to have this for what's around the corner. At the 17th level, we'll get access to 9th level spells, and Will the Banshee is great for some Eleven Screams that end up killing people with 8d10 damage. Weird is also great if you want to kill enemies 120 feet who can see you. Each enemy ends up taking 16d6 mental damage and must attempt a will save, and those who fail those will saves can die outright with a failed will save and a failed fortitude save. For answers feet, get heroic presence so you can grant 10 willing creatures within 30 feet of you a 6 level zealous conviction. Although the spell ends, if you give the target a command they wouldn't normally find appealing. So this is good for Steve, Nancy, Hopper, Jonathan, Will, Dustin, Mike, Lucas, Max, and Billy. Maybe not that last guy. Resolve, your rank and will save is increased up to master. When you roll success on a will save, you get a critical success instead. Skill increase, get intimidation up to legendary. 11 is scary. Terrifying sometimes. For a sorcerer, if you at the 18th level, get echoing spell. If your next action is to cast a spell, the 4th level or lower, that has no duration. The spell's energy reverberates and echoes, so you can cast that spell a second time before the end of your next turn without spending a spell slot. For a skill, if you get legendary professional, you work as a legendary performer, except you gain higher pair of jobs when you earn income with lore, so you get paid to talk to the upside down. That's pretty cool, write a book. At the 19th level, you get Bloodline Paragon, which means you can add two common 10th level spells of your tradition to your repertoire. You gain a single 10th level spell slot to use. I also suggest using Gates, so you can upgrade Gates to the Upside Down. General feels get Incredible Initiative to gain a plus 2 initiative roll. Legendary Spellcaster, your proficiency rank in spell attack rolls and spell DCs for your spells tradition increase with Legendary. For skill increase, get Acrobats to Legendary to have Cathal not kill 11 at any height. And at long last, we've reached level 20. Ability boost prior last boost in the Constitution, Wisdom, Charisma, and Intelligence. For our Sorcerer, if you get Blind Perfection, you get another 10th level spell slot to gain another use of summoning the Gate. And for our last skill, if you get Scared to Death, you can attempt Intimidation check against the will DCs of any living creature within 30 feet of you that can observe or see you, but they can't hear you or can't understand the language you're speaking, you take a negative 4 penalty. It doesn't matter, because on a critical success, you can kill them in a single roar, which is great for some sweet brain-melting action. With all that being said, do you want to defend Hawkins as 11? Let's start with your mental mind powers, or rather your mind breaking powers. You have a lot of abilities that can melt minds and they are deadly, doing a lot of damage worth of dice, and negative and mental damage which isn't really easily negated by resistances and immunities. You also have great spells for protecting the party, with the walls and shields to protect squishy members of the party. You're also terrifying, with great feats with a low one of 35 and a high of 54 on intimidation checks, so you can melt brains without even using a spell slot. You're also a great spy, able to peek in on people's lives with a name, and with your role, you should be rolling them just fine. You also got a wealth of knowledge with the Veil of Shadows, making you a great bank of lore for any party daring to go forth, as well as the ability to tear a rift right there to take the fight to the Demogorgon to the Mind Flayer itself. Eleven is a great backline magic user with very niche abilities and skills, hovering around and making a great solid addition to any party. No wonder Mike is depressed for pretty much the entirety of Season 2. Friends don't lie, friends protect. Grab some magos, put on your best punk outfit, and get ready to melt some minds. Just keep your head straight, and keep an eye out for your party or else your world might go all topsy-turvy or upside down.